today. Those of you who are watching via Facebook or YouTube, amen, we encourage you to do the same thing. We're so happy that you've taken the time to join us here, here at New Life, amen. Christian Fellowship here in the wonderful city of Brandon, Florida, under the direction of our great pastor, Bishop Reverend Dr. Robert Register, amen. We're so happy, happy and delighted that you've taken the time to join us, amen. As we magnify and lift up the name of the Lord, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord together and let us join in as we worship his name. We're located at 1321 Providence Road here in Brandon, Florida. Amen. Again, as we stated, our pastor is Bishop Robert Register, amen, along with his lovely wife, Ava Silla Register. Let us look to the Lord in prayer as we embark on this worship experience on today. And so, Father, we give you glory. We give you thanks and praise for who you are. Just because of who you are, we give you glory on today. Because of who you are, God, we've taken the time, God, to get ourselves dressed, to come into these four walls, to give your name the praise, God, because you inhabit the praises of your people. And God, on today, we ask, God, that you pour out your spirit upon those, God, who are watching on the uh, social media platforms on today. God, even those that are present in the building today. Father, we ask that you pour out your spirit upon them, God. Let your word, God, be poured out upon your people on today. Let it come forth with power and authority. Father, we pray, God, that the songs that are going to be sung today, God, that we come forth with power and authority, Father, God. We pray, God, that your, your spirit would be in the midst of your people, God. Healing will take place, God. Deliverance will take place. And not only that, Father, God, we pray God that salvation will take place on today. Father God someone that may not know you, who've never heard of you, Father God, we pray God that you prick their hearts. And God that they will surrender unto your name today. So have your way on this wonderful occasion on today God. We pray God that you would show up in a mighty way. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll give you all the glory and all the praises belongs to you in Jesus mighty name we pray. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, praise team. Let us go ahead and start this worship experience on today. Song says, it is so. Amen, amen, amen. It is so. It is so. Come on, clap your hands in this way.
song. You can sing this. Come on. Everybody, come on. Lift up your voice and sing. Hallelujah. He wants to hear you today. Hallelujah. Come on, give it to him today. It doesn't matter what you've done. He deserves your praises. Come on. <laughs> Come on, I think we ought to lift that up one more time. Everybody, let's do it. Come on, everybody, lift up your voice and sing it. Sing it. Hallelujah. It's universal. Even in China, it's the same thing.
Chapter number one, I shall prosper. I shall prosper in every area of my life. I want you to see those areas that have been neglected. You say, when you say, I'm going to prosper in every area of my life, I want you to see growth taking place in those areas. I can be what this word says I can be. I can do what this word says I can do. Thank you, Father. 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 For revealing your word. Amen. You sound so good. Good to be here this morning. Good to see you. Amen. All these things going on in our country and in the world at large. I just want to uh, give a public service announcement before I get into the word. As you know, Florida has become, uh, as they say, an epic center for this virus all over again. We want to give not just shout outs, but our prayers. I solicit you to pray for the first responders. We have people in this church that are, that are nurses. They're on the front line. When I joined the military, some of us in here are uh, prime military people. When you take an oath to the Constitution, you say that you will defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That means that you will fight them. Nurses don't take that kind of oath. You all talking to me? They don't make nurses take that oath. Nurses, they have an affinity for people and humanity. But they don't take an oath that they, when they go to work, they gonna, somebody going to kill them. Now they're faced with that when they go to work. Just one mistake. Hey, Joe, one, just one mistake. One nurse being a little tired. She worked, to, worked an extra shift. And she's careless about her mask or her, uh, how she handles things. And she could be infected. So I want you to, I'm soliciting your prayers for these nurses. I mean, they're not soldiers. They're women and men. They went to college. Yes, they have a, a care and concern for, for, the, for those that are sick, but I don't think they ever thought they would be in a situation like this. Amen. And, and for those, uh, you know, I've heard people beat up folk that have not taken back the vaccination. And I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to beat people up that have not been vaccinated. I'm, I'm here to, uh, to do my best to help you protect yourself. Amen. And if you have not been vaccinated, you're in this church, and you have not caught COVID-19, that tells me that you know how to maneuver through this virus. So for you, I want to encourage you, whatever you've been doing, Keep doing it. Because if you have not been infected yet, it means you're doing something right. Now, if you haven't been infected because you, you've been frivolous and careless, then, you know, eventually your luck will run out. But I'm very careful. I've heard people catching the virus that have, they said that um, they had the mask on and all that stuff. Listen, I was looking at some reports that said that people caught it even after they they had uh, taken the vaccine. And the problem is, is that once you think you've taken the vaccine, you think you can't catch it. And you can still catch it. That's right. And so what happens is, we're so busy, the, 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 the country is so busy to push people back to work and not thinking about the welfare people. Mm -hmm. and, and then a lot of us are so quick that we want to start our life, we want to start that engine all over again, we want to do our thing. Yeah. And unfortunately, they, they, they went back too quick and because they went back too quick, they're going to have worse, they're going to have the problem that they, they, they thought they would have. And if you notice, I said to you before that 
that you think that we we just got over something. No, it's going to get worse. Why? Because I, in my heart of hearts, and studying scripture and praying in my silent time with God, listen, everything comes to an end, even life. Your life, my life, and this earth that we live on. It's not, it's not meant to live in perpetuity. The planet is dying. The natural resources of this planet are, are slowly being used up. There are people in this, in this world that don't have it as good as you and I have it. I'm going to say it again. There are people on this planet that don't have it as good as you and I have it. They can't go to the store and, and buy dresses and shoes and all that stuff that we spend money on. And we, and we still are not happy. Still ain't happy. Got all kind of money, all kind of nail polish on our fingers. And come on, I got some of my money. I ain't just, I ain't just throwing shade at women. Right. Get mine done too. But we seem to have everything. And still ain't got no peace and still ain't got no joy. This attack from the enemy was pre-planned. You know, you read the scriptures that talks about there's going to be a falling away. That the son of perdition is going to make us fall away. Well, he, we haven't seen him yet, but what we've seen is a falling away. And we've seen a falling away because most people that have been in here didn't realize it really takes commitment to hang in here. Huh? When I first started ministry, I didn't start ministry because I wanted to get a check. I wanted to be a pastor. My life was rotten. I felt rotten. And I wanted a way out of being, of feeling that way. And Jesus offered that to me. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I said, Jesus offered that to me. So I want to encourage you to keep your mask on. I took mine off right now because I'm not as, as close to you as I, I need to be, but Stay masked. The, the report was that, that the virus is being spread by people that have been vaccinated. And I mean, there, there's some crazy stuff going on. My, I have, my, I've had three different nieces down here. Two of my nieces are in uh, close to you, Davenport. That's right down the street. They're in uh, some resort area. And let me tell you something. They down there and they act like they know COVID here. Everybody unmasked. Everybody. And I told them, I said, when I went to see them, I had my mask on. I told them everybody here gets infected. Asked me that I want something to drink. Heck no. I ain't say heck no. <laughs> if everybody's infected here, why would I want to drink here? And it might be the drink that infects me. I was really, I was really careful. I didn't want to go and see them, but I love them. They asked me to come. I only stayed a few minutes, but, but here, here, listen to me. You've got to make sure that the people that you let in your space, they're responsible. I'm gonna say that again. You got to make sure that you, the people that you let in your space, they are responsible with who they let in their space. A whole lot of people being affected by people that they thought. In fact, I have a have a dear friend said that she was with her best friend, headed to Atlanta, and the girl forgot to tell her that she wasn't feeling good. By the time they got back, they both had the sniffles. COVID-19, after the vaccine. And it, that could have been avoided if the person would have just told the truth. Mm -hmm. Or if a question would have been asked, and listen, this, listen, this is your life. Ask the question. I don't care if your mama, your child. Ask the question. Who's been in your life the last 24 hours? Have you been anywhere? Have you touched anything? Why? Because I don't want you killing me. Yes, sir. I don't want you to get sick. Mm -hmm. I just want to inform you. We need to be informed about this deadly virus. And my heart goes out to the teachers. Then the students that are, that are 12 years old and under, they say right now the, the science isn't in yet whether or not they should get vaccinated. But if they're not going to be vaccinated, they should have masks on. The governor said, no, no mandate. No mandate. No mandate. So now, watch this. You're going to leave the responsibility on people. And we already showed that we don't know how to be responsible. Yes, sir. You know, in, in all the wonderful things about this country, we are weak in so many areas. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. oh, preach. 
Our weakness has been exposed. We are not united. We are divided. And the whole world knows it. Our Achilles heel has been exposed. China didn't have this problem. You want to know why? Because they told them, you're going to take this shot. Take it or go to jail. you got options. Sometimes options get you in trouble. Sometimes grace will get you in trouble because you don't really understand that grace will run out one day. So I want to I want to caution you because I want to see you next week. Be careful. You said, Bishop, how, did, how have you not caught it? I am careful. So my niece said, guess what? I put that hand sanitizer. Always been in the car, never taking it out. Guess what? I use it all over again. Now why? Because I don't know where that Delta variant is at. Yes, sir. And and come to find out, you know, it's not just forgive me, hillbillies not taking the vaccine. You got some black hillbillies ain't taking it. And I'm not saying that in the derogatory sense. Come to find out the only people at my niece's party was her fiance. All the rest of them have not, have not had the vaccine. I said, okay. You all stay your distance from me. Why? Because uncle did, your uncle, your great uncle didn't come down here so you could get him sick. I have a mission. I have a purpose in God and I'm not going to allow my purpose to be defaulted because I'm not circumspect with my time. I'm not monitoring who comes in my life and where I go. When I leave here, I go home. Just give me a few moments to just, I, 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 be why? Because, because if, if I did not go straight home and started hanging out, guess what? I'll get myself infected and infect you. The only people I hug or touch are you. I don't touch anybody else. I don't shake anybody else's hand. We had some people come by the house the other day. Guess what? I didn't know where they had been, and I let my wife entertain them. I stayed locked up. Now, that might have been unhospitable, but guess what? I'm not dying from no COVID. I'm not getting sick from people that I don't know. So I err on the side of caution. I want you to, we don't have a lot of space in here. And we don't have a lot of people in here. So it's incumbent upon you and I, not just to be responsible, to be honest and trustworthy. I'm trusting that you know that this, this virus is deadly. That you're going to walk and be careful about where you go and where you don't go. Because I need to be embraced. I need to feel that somebody loves me. And I don't want to, I don't want a, a comforting hug and at the same time get sick. Am I talking to you? All right. Let's go to the text. Amen. Uh, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. And this is Becoming Better Fisher of Men, part two. Better fish. I was only able to get to one point. And, and, you know, let me read the text first. Here begins the reading of God's word. But then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, and some doubted. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, all power, God Almighty. That word is also consistent with the word all authority. All power and all authority has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. This morning you didn't go ye. You came here. You came here to get your battery recharged. Amen. You came here because you've been wounded and you want to be comforted. You need to be, you need some bandages on. And then once we once we fix your wounds and put some bandages on you, we're gonna put you back out there in the front line. Because the fight is still going on. Go ye, you didn't go, you, you didn't go ye this morning. You came here because you came here to get some instructions. Because you're not ready yet to deal with this power that God is going to give you. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the, and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Somebody say amen. 
Amen. I want to talk to you just for a few more moments on the subject, Becoming Better Fishers of Men, part two. Father, have your way in this place. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Now there's the end of the heart, the things that you prepared for them that love you. Help us get a better appreciation for the call that's on our lives. It's greater than basketball. It's greater than acting. It's greater than singing. For the greatest call on life is to call, be called a woman or man of the Most High God. Not who wins an Oscar, not who wins an Emmy, not who wins a, a gold medal, but who picks up that cross and carries on the mission of Christ. We give you thanks that we might be edified this morning and your name glorified. This and all other merits we beg in the matchless, wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen and clap amen. those hands if you love it. So there are four points I want to bring out. The first point I brought out very clear was the, the, the problem with people today in terms of their, uh, of their commitment to Christ or their con consistency. It has to do a lot with whether or not they have an authentic encounter with him. You know, I did some research early this morning, um, last night too, on what are, what are the 10 most desired occupations? 10 most desirable occupations that people that are like you and I are human. The first one is, watch this, everybody wants to be a, a music star. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan. Ow, I feel good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, Ali, everybody wants to sing. Everybody want to be seen. Why, 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 why is that so desirable? Why you want to be Prince? He's dead. Prince. Prince died from an overdose. Why is it that we want to be stuff that people are messed up? Look, look the first one is a music star. People want to be, they, they see that. They see that as the ultimate expression of, of freedom, power. So most people want to be a music star. Second, I, now guess what? You know what you used to want to be. Can you say amen? Say ouch. Watch this. So second on that list, Shantana, is they want to act. You do a good job of that. The actors, they want to be actors. They love that, that Danny Glover. They like Danny Glover. They like, they like the, you know, the, the attention they get. They want to be Eddie Murphy. People want to be actors. They love that. They, that they can play a part and then go home and be who they are. They love the fact that they can work maybe one movie a year and then live like the devil the rest. People, want, don't, people don't want no responsibility. They want to be celebrated and honored without much sacrifice. So acting is number two. Number three, I want to be LeBron, baby. I want to be Julius Jones. I want to be T.O. I want to be this great receiver. I want to be Tom Brady, man. Notice, the first three ain't got nothing to do with ministry. The first three ain't got nothing to do with saving nobody's soul. The first, matter of fact, the first three ain't got nothing to do with other people. It's all about me. Me first, me second, and me third. It's all about being self-absorbed and how much I can get out, how much I can squeeze out of this life. You don't see preacher, you don't see pastor, you don't see any of that in there. Why? Because most people don't want to do that. To want to do this means that you, you recognize that there's a call on your life. So, see, see, you got to recognize the call before you become a disciple. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So this, the third one is a pro athlete. Guess what the fourth one is? And I, I shucks, I even want to do this now. Jet pilot. Mm. I'm trying to get Brother Gill to help build me a, 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 a simile in my house. I want to fly so bad. I'm serious. I'm not just talking. You'd be surprised how many people, they just want to fly. They're fascinated with flying. Not saving souls. Flying, acting, basketball. You know what the Bible tells us in the first book of John? It says, love not the world, neither the things of the world. 
for the if the anybody that has the love of the world, the, what was it? It's the lust of the eye. And the, so we are looking at things that look good, but don't always turn out good. I wish I had some help in here this morning. Joel ain't got to preach back. The, the fifth one is people want to be novelists. They like to be authors. They think authors are powerful people. The sixth one is somebody want to be CEO over their own company. They don't want nobody telling them what to do. They want to be the top dog. I can understand that. Number seven, watch this, video game tester. And that's up. You know why? Because you'd be surprised the money that's spent on video games. It, it ain't in the million, it's in the billions of dollars. Games. Come on, walk with me. I said games. People want to, why? Because there's money in it. They ain't just having fun. Folk want to have fun and make money. You'll catch it in a minute. Number eight, this might, this might shock you. Porn star. Look at that. Not a deacon, not a deaconess, not a wife, not a father. But a porn star. These are the most ten desirable positions of employment that we think are marvelous. We think are noteworthy. We think are, are desirable. These things, and in nowhere on this list does it say teacher, educator. No one, nowhere on the list does it show somebody with some compassion or desire to help anybody else. Why? Because we're, 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 we're becoming more and more every day more self-absorbed. More about ourselves and not about other people. So, watch this. So, it goes without saying that we don't have people in the church like we had yesterday because most people in the church have not had an encounter with Jesus. They've had no encounter. See, you've got to have an encounter with him in order for him, in order for you to come to a place of surrendering it all. Somebody say an encounter. So that's the first thing we said. I gotta have an encounter with the Lord. You know what the Bible said. Now here's what the Bible says in the book of uh, I think it's a uh, First Corinthians chapter two, one, two, and three. It describes the type of people that God calls into the ministry. Just just give me a few moments. Watch this. So if you're wealthy, educated, come from the upper echelons of society, he might not call you. And, and it doesn't mean he doesn't call people that are in those places. He does. But that's not where he normally calls people. Let me, I, 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 maybe I got to show you. I can show you, but I can tell you. Hello, somebody. I believe it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Give me a moment. Or 2. How many love the Lord in this place? Amen. I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Technology. Sum up. Look at First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-six through thirty-one. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to verse 31. Look what it says. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to verse 31. What was that? You can't get it up? It's frozen. Let me read it. For you see your calling, brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty men, noble are called. Verse 27, but God has chosen the foolish things. The, uh, you got to see this. See, see, God has chosen, look at this, the foolish things of this world. To confound the wise. And I think he does that for a reason. Because if the devil knew who was called, the attack would come a lot quack, a lot quicker and a lot more intent. He don't know who's called. He's looking to see where the call might be.
to see who is a, a bit sensitive to the needs of other people. He's looking to see if you stand out in the crowd that you're not self-absorbed, but you have a sense of responsibility and duty towards others. The enemy does not know who's called until somebody comes to a place of having an encounter with Jesus. Got to have an encounter. Once there's an encounter and once there's, a, there's an acceptance of who Jesus is, then an enemy comes and attacks. So it says here, he does not choose things based on how well dressed and how, how, how smart you are. So that's the first thing. So, so a lot of us, a lot of us did, did not think that we had a call on our lives because we come from nothing. We don't come from people that had a whole lot. Amen. And so I, I believe that God allows that to take place because if the enemy knew that what was in us, he would attack us right away. The Bible says that, that when, when Herod knew that Jesus was born, he sent word that he wanted every child two years old and under to be killed. You want to know why the, you've been going through hell? Because there's a call in your life and nobody told you. You want to know why you was abused and molested when you was a child? Because there was an anointing on you as a child. That's why the enemy attacked you and attacked you often. Because there was a call in your life. You was no bad kid. You wasn't the black sheep of the family. There's an anointing on you. You want to know why that killed her and didn't kill you? Because God put something in you that could not be destroyed. Somebody say I'm anointed. And I don't even know it. Anointed. But in the bar. Anointed, but struggling with crack. Anointed, but on the whole, uh, as a whole on the straw. Anointed, but a crackhead. Don't even know it. And people look at you and say, man, he, he or she's not going to make it. But you'd be, like, you'd be surprised. That's the person that will make it. Why? Because of the anointing. Some of us should have been dead. Sutton, why couldn't the crack kill us? Why? There was anointing on you. Why couldn't the liquor kill you? Why couldn't the bullet kill you? There was in the chamber that when the gun was pointed at you, you should have died. You couldn't die because there was a call on your life. I wish I had somebody in there understood the call of God on their life and had passed through death many times, but you're still here. Who's still here? Who's still here? Used to be a fool out in the streets. Who's still here? You to drink and do all kinds of crazy stuff in car accidents and want to know how you survived. How you survived all that alcohol. You did it because there's a call. And whenever there's a call on a person's life, God is obligated to make sure when you don't know the call is on you to protect you. Until you can protect yourself. Do I have a witness in here? Listen, there's some things right now I don't need God to do for me. Why? Because I've learned how to do it for myself. When the enemy comes against me like a flood, guess what? I know how to take the weapons of my warfare. They're mighty through God through the pulling down of stronghold. I'm not a child anymore. You just can't make me feel bad anymore. Come on, somebody. You just can't make me feel like I ain't nobody no more. Why? Because I've come through the rough side of the mountain. I have been in this chest for a while. I know in who I am and whose I am. And I know in who I believe. Do I have a witness in this place? You just wonder why I couldn't die. There was a call in my life. Man shot at me point blank range. And the bullet missed me by inches. Why? The call. The call. And so what happens is somewhere along the line you get to a place where you realize that that you ain't been lucky. But you've been blessed. Yeah. Look, it had nothing to do with that, that, 
that 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 trigger being stuck. Luck ain't had nothing to do with with the bullet missing you. Luck ain't had nothing to do with. I wish I had it with. Luck ain't had nothing to do with it. And the fact in the last eighteen months you ain't caught COVID. Hit that organ for me. Hey, luck, luck, luck ain't had nothing to do with it. I ain't got COVID, and I'd have been to done funerals. I'd have been to Mississippi. I'd have been to Georgia. I'd have been to New York. I'd have been back and forth all up this time. And guess what? I ain't got COVID. It ain't luck. It's God's grace on my life. And I'm not stupid. Somebody holler in this place for me. Somebody holler for me. So, so, so I know. I know how to, see, watch this, watch this. And because this is not something that everybody desires. It's not something that everybody wants. And ain't nobody trying to knock you down to get to, get to the bathroom to clean it up. <laughs> ain't, nobody, ain't, ain't nobody trying to run you over to pick up trash or, 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 or clean up chairs in the sanctuary. Ain't nobody trying to beat you to do that. God allows us to come in a place like this for the purpose of being trained. Somebody say trained. Listen, in the text, in the text, the Bible tells us that they met him, they had an encounter with him. And after they had the encounter with him, the Bible said the next thing they gave, he gave them was power. Somebody say power. power. Oh, come on, somebody. Power. You know what? You, listen, I ain't had nothing to eat this morning. Barely ate yet, barely ate anything yesterday. But you want to know what's got me going right now? Huh? It's some power. Give somebody a imaginary high five and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, I got some power on the inside of me. It wakes me up in the morning. It keeps me, it keeps me invigorated throughout the day. And when, and when I feel like it, I call on the name of the Lord and he'll answer. Do I have anybody in here? At any time of the day that you feel like calling on him, You'll open up your mouth and give him a praise and power. Do I have anybody in here? You work all day, tired, but all of a sudden you say, Lord, give me strength. And because you're connected to him, then power, I said power, I said power, begins to come into my life. You want to know how I was able to stop doing some things. It wasn't, it wasn't counseling that did it. It wasn't fear of hell that did it. It wasn't my wife arguing me that did it. It was power. Somebody said power. Power from on high. They said I was going to be nothing but nothing but like my daddy. But what they didn't know, I had something on the inside. Somebody say I got power. Power to say goodbye. Somebody say I got power to say goodbye. Open up your mouth and say neighbor. I got power to say goodbye. Sayonara. Arriva Dutchy. Oh wow. Somebody say I got power. I don't know what I'm preaching to. But there's some things you need to tell goodbye. It might be Sarah. It might be Hagar. It might be Billy. I don't know who it is. But you got to have the gift of goodbye. Tell your neighbor. Neighbor, I need power to say goodbye to some things that have been affecting me the wrong way. Open up your mouth. Power, power, power. Why is he giving this power? Because he wants people to see that since Jesus ain't here no more, that he left a little light in me. Let your light so shine. It can't shine without power. I had to have the gift of goodbye over alcohol. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Don't know somebody let that one go. I had to have the gift, the gift of goodbye over cocaine. Yes, sir. Come on, uh -huh. sir. Testify. 
You know why? Because it was a stronghold in my life. <laughs> and when I got power, I was able to say goodbye. I was able to say goodbye, goodbye, goodbye to my sorrows. Goodbye to my sorrows. Do I have anybody in here? When you get power, God gives you power to tell your devils, Arima Nurchi, oh wow. Do I have some help in here? Open up your mouth and say, I got power. Watch this. He said, you're going to be endued with power. Interesting thing about the word endued. It means to be inoculated. Oh, God. It means to be immunized. It means that you took a booster shot. Open up your mouth and say, neighbor. You want to know why? I'm still living. You want to know why? COVID ain't got me. I had a booster shot. God put something in me that no weapon formed against me. Oh, come on, y'all ain't preaching with me. Open up your mouth. Some of my friends, I heard that some of my friends caught COVID. And they was in the same place that I was. But I didn't catch it. You want to know why I didn't catch it? No weapon formed. Open up your mouth. You got to say it. Not the preacher saying it. No weapon formed. No weapon formed. No weapon formed. That means even if you go buy some spare parts and put it together, it shall not prosper. No liar, no cheat will prosper. Open up your mouth. Mother Eloise, you got power, power, Holy Ghost power to reach into your 90s. I told somebody yesterday, I want to be an Octarian. I'm in my 60s now. That means I want to reach to 80 and I want to be just like I am, strong and committed to the things of the Lord. Do I have anybody in here? You're not where you want to be yet, but you're ready to climb higher than you've ever been before. And I can do it because I've been endued with power. My success comes from the fact that I got something on the inside of me that won't let me fail. Won't let me fail. That, that's what it says. He told them, see, when you look at this text, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and people get confused and all this stuff. But when he gave them power, he also gave them power to forgive sins. And this is where the church went wrong. You and I don't have the power to forgive sins. You and I have the power to forgive each other. The problem with the church is that we've taken some scripture and we've manipulated them to suit our own purpose. God never gave a man the power to forgive another man of sin. I can lead you to Christ, but I don't have the power myself. I don't care how many boxes I make, how many beads I got, or how many Hail Marys I tell you. I do not have the power to forgive you of sin. So, so my brothers in, in, in another denomination, another faith, they tell people, I'm you forgiven. They come in the box, they tell them what they did wrong, they say, you forgive it. You don't have that power. That's right. That's right. Then the Bible says, they said, who can forgive sin? Only God. Who is this man? How can he forgive sin? He said, since you said only God can forgive sin, since that the Son of Man might show that he has power on earth, I say to the sick of palsy, take up thy bed and walk. Because the only person that has the power to forgive sin is God. That's right. Watch this. That power is also available to influence. You are in here today because you've been influenced. 
the influence, the grace that's on my life, the grace that's on somebody else's life that you knew that were going here, they influence you. See, that, that's why you got to be careful with this power that God gives you. Amen. Because he, if he gives it to you, he ain't going to take it back. All right now. The gifts and the calling of God are without okay. repentance. So watch this. Before he gives you something, and you know what they call this power? They, they call this power, uh, uh, it's the Greek word. No, no, no that, that's, a, that's another Greek word. Uh, that, 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 that word is, is dunamis is only a, a title to God. But this word, the, the word called azusia, which means power and authority. God is not inclined to give you power and authority if you don't know how to use it. Oh, right. uh, you only hear me. See, the problem, listen, you know America had, when they talk about America was founded on the principle of God. There's some truth to that. Why? Because you see the country the way it's running. He gave certain people the power to influence this nation. This nation is running a certain way because God had given people influence. You're only talking back to me. You're in here today and you're worshiping today because God has given somebody some influence over your life, over my life. We're here today not just because we want to be here, because God has given us somebody the spirit of influence. Amen. Not confluence. Right. Somebody say power. And the power is meant to glorify God. It's not meant to get you no big house. You might get one, but that's not the primary reason for the power. The primary reason for the power is not so that you can have a church of 2,000 members. The primary reason of the power is not so you can have the prettiest wife in the church. The reason for the power has nothing to do with how many cars you got. How many members you got? It's all about glory and glorifying God. So you don't, this kind of power don't come right away. But when it comes, you know you got it. When it comes, listen, you begin to walk circumspectfully. Listen, I'm 66 years old. I have I've determined I'm going to get where God wants me to go. Watch this. So I'm walking circumspectfully. How can I make sure I am? Because I got power. So as I got power. Even when I make mistakes, the power of God picks me back up. Yes. Turn me back around. Put my feet on a rock to say, do I have anybody here that got that kind of power? Yes. Holy Ghost power. The power to pick you up when you fall down. The power to address any crazy thing in your life. Somebody say you've seen somebody that's literally got power in his life. Power to pa pass tests. Power to be a doctor. Power to be a lawyer. Power to be a wife. Power to be a husband. I got power. Anything I want to be in God, I can be because I got power. Open up your mouth and say, I got power. Power to play drums. Power to play the organ. Power to play even if they ain't got no money to build me to play it. Hello, somebody. Power to preach even if they ain't got no money for me to preach. Power to clean even if they ain't got no money. Why? Because it's not about me, it's about him. Oh, we need this power. We need this power today more than we've ever needed it before in our lives. What kind of power? We need power of agreement. We have a nation that's this this breaking on the on the on the on the state of, of just absolutely coming apart at the seams. And we need people in positions like I'm in, position of a power and authority to influence people and masses of unifying. If you hear people preaching division, you know they're demonic. There's a devil in them. I don't care what color they are. If there was ever a time the people in this nation, the people of the world need to come together, it's now. We are all facing the same enemy. COVID don't care if he kills you in Ethiopia or you in Canada. COVID don't care if you in, if, if, if you in Bangladesh or you in Panama in, the, in a ghetto. Those pandemics don't care about your race, your ethnicity. This is a time when the entire earth community could come together. And guess what? The people that we put in office, they're preaching division. The people that we put that is in the pulpit, they're adding to the to the turmoil. Why would you be in a church that's preaching hate and division? I'm talking to somebody out there on YouTube and Facebook. Why would you be in a church and hear a pastor that's not talking about unifying what's left. After Jesus fed the 5,000, he said, go 
and, and pick up the remains. This is the time to pick up the remains and, and refocus and redouble our efforts so we can begin to do the work of the evangelist, the work of the ministry, become better fishers. Amen. The third point, I'm just about done. He said, he said that after they got power, he was going to commission them. You know when you get commissioned, it means that you're brought into active service. Come on, I've been commissioned. You know, in a commission, that means that somebody has signed off on your commission. And when you get, when you get commissioned, guess what? You got a start date, and it could be in perpetuity. Some people, got, I got a four-year commission, I got a five-year commission, 10-year commission. Whatever your obligation is, you're obligated to that contractual commitment. For those of us that are believers, our contract is in perpetuity. It never ends. You might retire from Greyhound, baby, but you don't retire from the church. Amen. <laughs> you might retire from Bell South, but you don't retire from the, sir, the, sir, the church. I have a witness in here. So he said, he said, he said, he said, go ye therefore in all the world. And teach. He said, commission them. But watch this. You can't commission people that have been called. He said in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he said, find people who are faithful. Mm -hmm. what, what does faithful have to do with it? Because if you, if you pull somebody from the ranks that's not faithful, you're not going to get your job done. If you pull somebody from the ranks that's a nice person, that's qualified to do the job, but don't have no power, you're going to hurt them. Because in order to, to do the job, you not only need qualification, but you need power. Right. Why? Because the devil is going to attack you while you're in that position. We put people in place that are not anointed for the position. And then when people start attacking them, they want to, you know, I thought this was a church. Why are they so mean? Why are they so nasty? It's not that, sweetheart or brother. You need to toughen up. And so God knows your weak area, so he's put you right in the lion's den. So they can slice you on you, cut on you. And you need to learn how to take a licking and shut your mouth. So you left this church, but that church, and they still, it's the same over there. No matter what, why? Because it's not the church, it's you. And he's not trying to punish you, he's just trying to refine you. He's trying to make you strong, trying to make you the person that you should be. And you keep running from correction. You keep running from the pain and the pain ain't going to stop until you surrender to the commission. Amen. The commission. I've been commissioned. Sign the oath of commission. And I, my commission is in perpetuity. You don't stop. You don't give up. You don't quit. I ain't coming back to church. No officer says that to his command. Eloise, no officer says, I'm not coming back to the command. You don't go ahead and figure out how you're going to get food and how, who you're going to fight. I quit. When you're in the military, you just can't quit. You go to jail. Ain't no such thing as quit. You sign a contract. And the only way out of this contract, if you break it, is prison. So people don't want to go to prison. And guess what? You don't want to go to hell either. Hell will be your prison. If you don't do what God told you to do. Paul said, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. Is there a woe is me in the house anywhere? You know you're supposed to be doing something. You got the equipment. You got the grace. You got the spot. You got the money. You got everything you need. And you're still not doing it. But yet you've been commissioned. You've been commissioned. He said, I've given you all power and all authority to do this work. And can't nobody stop you. The only person who can stop you is you. Amen. And then he tells us, I'm going to watch you do the work. And I'm going to be with you every step of the way. So I said, Pastor, you have any fears? Yeah, I got fears. What are they? Getting old. Huh. Dying. Don't you have those fears? You know why we have fears of getting old? Because guess what? We don't have, we don't be, 
And we don't want nobody to take care of us. We, we know what it looks like. Come on. We know what it looks like. And we know... It, 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 we know right now some of the people that are in our space, and we know we keep getting older real fast. We don't want the people that are there right now because they ain't gonna show, ain't gonna take care of us. You got some people around you right now. You know, doggone well. You got if you mess around and became an octarian tomorrow, you out of luck, baby. You know, put your eggs in the wrong basket. So I have a fear of getting old. So watch this. If you have a fear of getting old, you better start being nice to some people. So said, what's wrong with her? See, what's wrong with them? They're so mean and so nasty. Don't bother. Don't say nothing. You're going to be in a wheelchair somewhere in the hospital tied up. Could you get me a cup of water? Isn't that that lady that was in church that was nasty? Man, I ain't getting her nothing. You bring the bell. Water! Water! Forgot how nasty you would be. Uh -huh. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. He commissioned them. He commissioned them. And he said, watch this. He said, part of the commission is that you're going to have to teach people. Now, here's the key. What makes disciples strong is that Jesus said, you, if you're going to make somebody a disciple, you have to come alongside them. And you have to walk them through the process. Some of the marriages that we see crumbling and coming apart wouldn't have come apart if some of you women would have just got in there with them. Stood alongside that, that young, immature wife. Held her hand and even though he was a wayward man, he had potential. And while the shit was being tossed to and fro, and she was about to head to the divorce court, you was right there with her. And every time the ship took a turn, you took it with her. Said, hold on, baby. I've been here. Don't, don't, don't give up yet. Then when the storm ends and restoration comes, she looks at you and says, thank you. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for supporting me. That's how you make, you stand with people. Amen. You support people through everything that they're going through. Jesus was with them for three and a half years. Every problem, every situation that they came upon, he was right there with them. When Peter's mother got sick, he was there. He was there to not only train, but to encourage compliment until he commissioned them. Who are you working on? And are they getting any better? You know the old adage that you can lead a horse to water? Some of y'all have led horses to water and then instead of watching and drink you got on the phone and bragged about yeah so and so come every week. So and so come in. I, I'm a minister. So and so I minister him. I got a men's meeting. I'm minister, minister, ministering. Yeah, but you don't realize they're coming, but they're not drinking. How you know they drink it? They're getting better. How you listen? I'm not. You ain't gonna waste my time. I can't have you wasting my time. I gotta know that when I'm bringing to the water, I'm watching you drink that water. You are drinking that water. Because you don't drink that water, guess what? I'm spinning my wheels with you, and all you're doing is ex extracting strength from me that I'm not going to get a return on. Discipleship takes work. But watch this. At some point, you got to know whether they're going to make it or not. At some point, you got to be able to cut your losses. At some point, hello, somebody. I'm closing. At some point, those, those ten virgins, those ten virgins, five had enough oil and five didn't. And when it came time for the, for the bridegroom to come, the five that didn't have enough oil, you know what they said? Hey, give us some of your oil. You know what they said? I ain't giving you none of my oil. Matter of fact, if you get downtown quick enough, 
you might be able to get some oil. Let me tell you something. Most of all of us in here got people around us that don't give us anything back. I'll say it again. You know what? Most of us have people in our lives that we're giving to and they don't give us anything back. You got to know who they are and you have to know how to cut them off. Get your own oil. Somebody said, get your own oil. I had to work to get mine. I had to get cut to get mine. I had to get beat down to get mine. This all didn't come cheap, baby. I had to go through some stuff to get this all money. I had to fall down a few times to get this all. I had to tell people I'm sorry. I had to tell my kids, forgive me. I had to tell a whole lot of people, I'm sorry to get this all. And you think I'm going to just give this all to you because you didn't get because you, you forgot to get enough of it? No, baby. You got to learn to get your own oil. And if I'm discipling you, guess what? You ought to have enough oil in you to get out of your dilemma. That's what Elijah told the woman. He said, what do you want from me? She said, they're coming to take my kids. He said, what do you have in your house? She said, I ain't got but a little oil. That's all it's going to take. And with that little oil, she worked her miracle. You got enough oil in you right now to be commissioned. To be commissioned to do the work of the evangelist, to do the work of the, the pastor, to do the work of the uh, of, of, of apostle, to do the work of the teacher and the pastor and the teacher. You have the ability right now. I used to tell people that I want to have a church, I want to have these 12 leaders and they all be on payroll. They're in here. They're in here. But guess what? God can't write you a blank check until you demonstrate that you are worthy of the commission. You know, they say that the, that the, te the, the teacher will show up when the student is ready to learn. Your blessing has always been there. God's just waiting on you. Just waiting on us. Father, have your way in this place. Have your way in this place, Jehovah God. Help us see and how the importance of having that confrontation, that, that, that encounter with you that can shape, change our heart and our mind. But we thought we were nobody and nothing and you gave us everything that we could ever ask for. Now commission us. Commission us to the work. Give us that anointing, that power from on high. And then give us the responsibility to care for it, to love it, to appreciate it, to grow in it. To grow in his grace. We give you thanks. We give you honor and we give you praise. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Come on and clap your hands if you love it. You know, that today is the first Sunday in August and... I, I, I was debating, should I wear a white suit? Should I come out here and look at tradition? And God said, look, this ain't the time for tradition. There's a pandemic. He said, go out in your battle uniform. Get comfortable. Be comfortable today. Amen? Amen. So when you come to church, if you want to dress up, dress up. You want to dress down? Dress down. I want you to be as comfortable as you can possibly be and safe as you possibly be with this pandemic. Are you listening to me? So when the church is over, we should be doing a whole lot of congregating together. I got boy. Right. 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 Amen. I captain. Tulu, 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 Tulu. Don't don't get offended when the people are saying Tulu. It's for your own. It's for your own health. Health. We want to hug. We want to embrace. We need it. But we've got to refrain from some of that right now. Amen? Amen? Especially if you don't know who comes and goes from your space. Father, have your way in this place. For those that are listening by Facebook and those that are here, God, I ask that, that they search their hearts. Maybe they need, they're in need of a Savior this morning. We pray, dear God, in the name of Jesus, that they come to know you as Savior. If you're out there 
in YouTube and Facebook land, you don't know Jesus Christ, your Savior, put down, I want to be saved today on 1 August 2021. In the comment section, I want Jesus to come in my life. And we're praying for you. Father, bless your people. Heal and deliver and set free. We give you thanks in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. We have some announcements. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. amen. We thank and praise God for the word. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for this word. Thank him for salvation. Thank him for the souls that belong to him. Thank you for those who have come into the midst of the sanctuary and have received the word. God, we thank you for all that you have done. And at this particular time in the service, we're going to prepare for our offering. Amen. So if you have an envelope and you would, or if you need an envelope, you can raise your hand and one of our ushers will be happy to give you an envelope to be able to give back unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. And those of you who are in Facebook land and who are also in here have seen the other optional ways to give. We uh, have the opportunity to give online. You can mail your checks or money orders in. Amen. Or you can give here freely and freely give. Amen. We thank and praise God for technology that gives us the ability to be able to give. I see a few of you still preparing to give your tithes and offerings and special offerings. So I'd just like to give you a few announcements while we're waiting for those to get ready for prayer. Thank and praise God for all of our visitors, whether you're a first time in Facebook or whether you see this posting later on YouTube, we thank and praise God for you connecting with us on today. We want to encourage you and thank those who have already given to our back to school supply drive. There is a container in the rear of the church in our children's church area for those of you who would like to donate um, supplies for our students. I believe the 10th of August, they're preparing to go back to school of all of our school age children. If you'd like to give a monetary to a donation, that's acceptable too and we'll make up the difference. Whatever you see that you see that you decide you want to give. We don't have a specific list. We want you to give according to your heart to support our back to school drive. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we'll go ahead and continue with the offering and finish the announcements later. Amen. Ushers, you may serve the people. Opportunity that we can come into your sanctuary and bring our tithes and offerings, God. We ask you to bless those who have given online, bless those who have given their checks in the mails, oh God, that we can continue to have a house that we can come in and worship you together in the spirit of truth and the spirit of love, oh God. May you take these financial resources and give us wisdom as we allocate and distribution of these resources to take care of your house. This is your house and those who serve in this house. Now, Father, we ask you to multiply it, not just 30, not just 60, but 100 fold. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 As the ushers are taking the offering back, we're gonna also prepare shortly to get ready for our communion. Just a few additional announcements as we are preparing our hearts and minds also for our communion time. We have a, a card, a couple of cards to read to acknowledge, amen, the gift of thanks. 
to Bishop and First Lady Register and the New Life family, I wish to thank you all for your calls and thoughts and prayers and your contribution during the passing of my sister, Betty Crawford Mahee. I love and appreciate you, and may God bless you all. Love, Sister Eloise Crawford Harris. Amen. Thank you. We have an additional card that reads, bless you for the little things you do in thoughtful ways. Bless you for the way you brighten up so many days. Bless you for the giving heart and kindness as it can be. Bless you in a thousand ways for truly blessing me. Thank you, New Life family, for the words are inadequate to express the warmth and joy you brought to my heart during the sickness and passing of my beloved Uncle Ricky. Your prayers and phone calls and text messages and expressions of love truly encourage me and my family to continue looking above where our help comes from. We are forever grateful. Love, Sister Chantel and family. Amen. Thank and praise God. It's good to have a church family, amen, that we can continue to do the work of the ministry and to be a blessing to those who are in the house and who's connected in the house and that they may be encouraged to continue to be a blessing to us. Amen. We thank and praise God. We have one more brief announcement and then we'll prepare for our communion. Our announcement will be by the WOW uh, ministry leader, my mother, Mother Bernadine. Amen. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Praise God for Bishop's message on this morning. Fishers of Men is part of the women's ministry. Carla says the wow ministry, but it's the women's ministry, and we Amen. have a women of the word Bible study, which is the wow Bible study. Amen. And so I just came here this morning. I could go on. I just think about a lot of things that I could say this morning in regards to this message this morning. But one of the things that I want to say as far as the women's ministry goes, is that this is how we help become, it, when you uh, come in contact and you get part of the ministry, we become better and stronger and more confident women uh, who can become fishers of men. So that is one of our goals. And so I'm here to just give you a, a brief, I wanted to give you a brief update on some of the activities, but I'll do that in another manner. But one activity, especially that is coming up, is that one of the things that we as the women's ministry will be doing, and Bishop has given me the okay to do this, is that every fifth Sunday uh, that we have during the year will be dedicated to women's awareness. And what we will be doing is bringing a brief special feature on those fifth Sundays to uh, recognize and hear about some of the relevant issues that are facing women uh, this day because there's a lot of things that are fa facing us as women and also as men as well And so this first our first new endeavor will be this fifth Sunday in August at, at our regular worship uh, service time and I will be presenting an informational and a brief uh, in instruction about how we can deal as a church and as women on domestic violence. Violence is on the rise in our nation. Definitely. And one area is definitely domestic violence because people have been, um, uh, what do you call it? On edge. On edge. With this but pandemic, they've been been combined up. into their homes yeah. and Continue. people start getting on each other's nerves and That's stuff. Right. So we want to talk about that. And it will just be a regular service and it will just be a brief special feature like we normally do for any other uh, when we're aware of any other holiday or in incident. But on that particular Sunday, uh, Bishop has asked and has recommended that we have a young lady by the name of Evangelist Danielle Smalley will be bringing the message for us on that Sunday at 11 o'clock. So I am asking and soliciting all of you 
Uh, so please come out that Sunday and be with us in that service. That Saturday prior to that, um, I had already had this schedule, is we have a workshop for the women, and it's called Level Up, Next Level All right. Ministry. All right. And so it's going to be a, um, we have a young woman that will speak to us, and we have worksheets to workshop. Now my uh, heart, my mind, when we first started having this, uh, was to have it right here in the church and do a little conference, a little breakfast, and let us fellowship together. But we got to pray about that now that this virus is on the rise again. We may have to do it virtually. But save that Saturday at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And we may have to do it Zoom. We may can do it here. We'll talk about it. We'll pray about it. And um, so that we can have, but we will have it. You will receive more details and uh, about that particular event, the Saturday the 28th and Sunday, August the 29th. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Let's do our communion. If anybody knows me, that's Ollie's son. Instead of son, that's, that's Ollie Jr. That's Oliver Jr. Good to see you, man. Love you. Look well. Know you're doing well. I forgot to put this out uh, earlier, right before communion. There's been a tremendous amount of killings, especially in black communities. It's, I mean, the numbers are, are, are startling in, in places like New York and Chicago, Houston, Texas, California, major urban areas. They, they do a lot of kills. I want you all to pray. We got to pray that demon out of the, these areas. We'll start praying this, this week. We got to see healing come. That's the job of the church to, to bring preservation to these places. So um, don't take you out that ball either. It's not just about the church, but we want to make sure the killing stops too. Amen. Yes, it is. On the same night that the Lord was betrayed. Amen. Has everybody got their communion cup? Yes. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. I said, isn't the Lord good? Amen. On the same night that the Lord was betrayed, he took some bread. I just swipe my bread. It was gone. Wow. Well, yeah, if I was home, I said the kids did it because they was hungry. <laughs> when he did the thanks, he break the bread and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Break the bread and eat it. After the same manner, when supper was over and supper had ended, he said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he comes. Drink. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Stand for the benediction. How many glad they came to our church this morning? Amen. We're open. Somebody say the church is open. Amen. With certain protocols. Thanks for having the door open today. Right, TT? Yeah. <laughs> All hearts and minds are clear. Brother Hagel, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for, for seeing something in us when we didn't see anything in ourselves. We thank you that that when we didn't see anything ourselves, it left us a sense of, of wanting us, a desire for more. And thank you for giving us your spirit. We have the power to conduct business on your behalf. You said that we're to occupy until you come. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling 
He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you that if any fish or any souls are going to be one, they'll be one because you and I were fishing for them. And you and I stood beside them and watched them go through the process before God commissioned them. Be blessed and go do your job. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Make sure you greet somebody before you leave. I love you all. Look to see you next.